I'll keep it very, very quick and fast the whole talk. And I've given this numerous, numerous times before. What I've you know, got feedback from users is whenever you are going to ask me a question, ask them specifically about your business. And that's going to help you a lot more than you know, asking, like, oh, man, I think I'll be able to give you much better feedback if you ask me specifically. Say, I have my business. How can I? What, what else can I need? Okay? So, cool. If you don't know me, I'm Sai Balki. I don't know how many of you were there yesterday. But, I did all your work. Everybody knows me. Well, I Alright, I feel, I feel like I'm well known now. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I've been blogging for a long time, 2006 to be exact. And I've been doing web stuff since 2002, when I was 12 years old. So, I have a site called WP Beginner, I have a site called List25, and I have numerous, numerous other blogs in very small niches that I'm not going to reveal. But, <laughs> but, so, rest assured, throughout all my blogs, I have a very strong success. I don't really have to. I mean, I work a lot, but I get, I get to take vacations and stuff too. So um, one of the things, you know, that like <laughs> I would say, it, you know, you have to you have to work your ass off, literally. So if you're here thinking you're gonna get rich quick, not gonna. Happen. If you think you're gonna start a blog and you're gonna quit your full time job, not gonna. Happen. Um, if you think you're gonna start blogging, you're gonna go, you know, travel all over the world like other super professional bloggers, probably not gonna happen, at least in the first year. Now, sorry to disappoint you guys, but what this talk is really gonna tell you is how to get started and then move on and work towards that goal. Okay, I get I I go to one conference every month, if not multiple ones a month. So I'm traveling literally everywhere, but that's not where I was when I started. Uh, I didn't used to make a whole lot of money when I started, but then, as long as you know, as long as you you add value and stuff, you're going to keep on going. One of the questions I always get is how much money can you really make online? What what's the limit? I mean, what's the limit of that guy jumping out and how high can you go from? There's really no limit of how much money you can make from blogging. Like Huffington Post was started as a blog and was sold for hundreds of millions of dollars. Same as TechCrunch. Mashable. Like, I know so many bloggers that only have one blog and they make seven figures. Just only blogs. So, there's, you're going to get as much as you put in. Um, the other question I get is how much traffic do you think you really make money? Right? People are like, do I need one million views to? How much, if I get like 500,000 views, how much money would that make? If I get 1 million views, how much money would that make? The amount of traffic you get has no relevance to the you know, amount of money you're going to make from your site. It, it all about, it's all about like targeted traffic, right? So I can have a site that gets 5 million page views and only make 10 grand, and I can have a site that only gets 1,000 page views a day and make like 50 grand. It's all about who's coming to your site, what are you selling to them, you know, and how targeted they are. What's your relationship with the user base, right? So for, for all I know, you can have 100 people coming to your site, and you can be selling a $6,000 product on that site. One person buys, you're making six, six grand a day from only 100 people coming to your site every day. Okay, so having that said, everybody's clear. It's not about the traffic. It's not about the quantity at all. It's all about the quality. So don't go buy traffic to inflate numbers. It's not gonna help you. No, like new bloggers, they always like, oh, I'm, I can like bump up my traffic by just going and going to this traffic network and like I'll exchange this thing. And then total bullshit. <laughs> don't do it. Do not do it. So I use a method, and this is the acronym, not the best one, but think, research, set up, group, repeat. So. How does that work? Works like that. Do what you love and love what you do. I was just telling that to a fellow here that you should do what you're passionate about, not only what you're good at. Okay? Just because you're good at it and you're not passionate about it, it's not going to work out very well for you over the long run. I could be very good at mowing my lawn, 
I'm not bad about mowing my lawn. I'm not going to mow it. I'm probably only going to do it once a month. I hate it rather than every week. But if I'm passionate about it, I'm more likely to keep it up and you know, trim, it, trim all the plants and like put flower trees or whatnot. So always do what you love and love what you do. Everything that I've done so far, I absolutely love. I'm always like trying to solve a need. And if there's you know something that I see that there's a problem, that's what I'm trying to fix. And that's how you know if you're going to pick a niche. You're like, okay, well, all the good industries are filled up and there's no room for me. If you think that, then really there's no room for you. If, as long as you can add a unique perspective to that industry, if you see, well, I want to start a site about cooking, but I'm only going to focus on this, and I'm actually going to show them video instead of just like writing a recipe. That's your niche. All right? So, having that said, moving on. Solving the problem, which I, like, you know, I, I don't know if I should repeat my story from yesterday on like how I went from proxies to RGAs to directories to blogging in, in the WordPress and so on. I started you know, high school, wanted to play games, solve my own problem, but I was wrong. I'm having a problem, a bunch of other kids in the high school is also having a problem, they want to play games. Okay, create the proxy, or you good. I wanted to play certain games that I wanted to go on numerous sites, create one RG site that had all those games. Solve my problem, but solve other people's problems too. Directly, everybody wanted you know, something free to submit to, and there was a long queue. I wanted that too. I had a bunch of domain names set up directories and submitted my own stuff. But a lot of other people to do the same. Solve their problems, solve my problem. Created WP Beginner because all my clients were asking the one that I wanted to get rid of, were asking the same questions. Why isn't there a resource for that? Solve my problem, turn out. And it's all the other people's problem. All right. So as long as you're solving the problem, you're going to be pretty good. But if you're only solving the problem for one person, you might not. You know, if you're if you're super micro niche, we're going to talk about. I mean, there's a big knitting community. I'm not going to use knitting as an example. They are very very targeted. There are a lot of people who knit. But let's say if you're talking about how to fix a broken chair leg. Not that many. The, you know, be, smart, be smart about what you're doing. Researching. How do you, how do you like, what are the process that I, I go about in, in my research? First thing, if I'm starting something, what's the end? Okay. What is my exit strategy? That's the first thing I think of. Because nothing really lasts forever. So, think that. Who's going to buy you out if you're going to sell? What's going to happen to you? What's your, what's your goal? Your short-term goal? What is your long-term goal? They shouldn't be two different things. Your short-term goal should be the one that is, they're helping you reach towards your long-term goal. I often see, but oh, my long-term goal is to you know, make a lot of money. No, that's not your long-term goal. Put something concrete. What is a lot of money? Don't, 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 like, be really specific with you because you're the only one who's, like, monitoring your success. And you need something to do so you can do that. Like, to put exact numbers. I didn't, I didn't meet this goal. Why didn't I do it? What went wrong in my process? So, that's why, like, always set realistic goals. But don't, like, sell yourself short either. If you're looking to get into an industry, how are you going to monetize it? Right? First things that I look at, Aside from you know banner ads, which is like, oh, I'm just going to put up Google AdSense. You're not going to make your millions from Google AdSense in most cases. Look at the products, something that you could create, or maybe something someone else has created that's complementary to you, what you're offering. Okay? Reach out to them. Hey, I'm about to start this website, and uh, you know, do you have any partnership program, affiliate programs, right? What let's say they have one, and they're like. Yes, we have one, and it's 25% uh, commission for every time you refer a sale. Well, it's, like, I'm going to be heavily recommending you about it. Do you think we can negotiate? There's always room for negotiation. Always room for negotiation. The moment you decide to settle, that's the moment you're losing. Okay? 
So if they're saying 25, it's okay. What about 35? Don't put your number out first. Let, let them you like, is there you know, room for something a little better? Room? They're like, well, we can do 30%. Or you know, you're like, try to see if you can get a little more. Like, I've got it up to 70% of the sale that I've made. Yeah. Any smart person who, who's like looking to get reach would understand that any audience you're sending them their way is the audience they were never going to get to begin with, right? So 30% of something you weren't going to get is more than 0%. As long as you can convince that point across, you're going to have a pretty lucrative deal with all of your partners. If you can work out a recurring deal, if, if it's a, you know, if, if, it's a, if it's a product or a service that they're charging monthly for, don't settle for like a one-time commission, unless that one-time commission is pretty hefty. If it's like three hundred dollars for the initial sale, all right, cool. That's that's something good. But if it's like, you know, they're charging thirty dollars a month and they're only giving you thirty dollars for the sale, or you only get the first month thing, why don't you work out something? What if what if you give you twenty percent for the life of the customer? Right. That that shows you that you really believe in the leads that you're bringing to them. Because oftentimes on these one-time affiliate programs, there's a lot of fraud. People just like you know bring initial leads and then they drop. So they get, they take their thirty dollars in, in one. But if you bring in quality leads, the other company is more likely to you know, say, all right, you know we believe in you and we like that you believe in all the people that you bring in. We will cut your deal twenty percent. So you can start twenty percent for a year. Is that beneficial than thirty thirty dollars? You know, do the, do the math, figure out, you know, how you're gonna make money from whatever you're about to start doing. See if you have any competitors. What are they doing first? How you can do it better second. Yeah. As long as you can repeat there and repeat whatever they're doing and don't do anything better, then there's no space for you in that industry. See where your competitors are lacking, if there are any competitors. See how you can add any value or any additional value to that industry and then start. If we have all this and then all of what they offer and then like a huge new section that we are offering for ourselves. That's something, you know, to do. You're also your own person. You know, you have your own voice, you have your own opinion. Anything that's opinion based, you know, would work well because that's your personality tied to it. Just depends on do you really want your personality tied to something. So that, there's a give and take because if, if, if I have a blog that's like they have my first name, like Sayed.com, I don't own Sayed.com. But if I have Sayed.com and you know, I talk about everything marketing, can I really sell Sayed.com? No, because then who's going to be Sayed if I sell it? <laughs> <laughs> so you, 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 have, you, have, you, have to think, you have to think very wisely that if you really want you super attached to it, one, one of the things you would notice on the beginning, I think, um, somebody brought, she brought it up yesterday, about why do you use editorial staff on, on the site? Never said site all here in post. I don't write all the posts, that's true. But I could have had every author's name on it. But I don't want any of the authors to be tied to the project. So whenever I sell the site to anybody else, it's always going to be you know, editorial staff. For all, they could get rid of who wrote it because the article is a resource. Does Wikipedia have who wrote the article? Any, any, any resource site is not going to say, you know, shouldn't really need an author's name, as long as the information is good. You need a data. I learned that. And you know, I, I had a whole post about it. People are now getting into a trend of getting rid of dates. That's pretty important. A whole, a whole new you know, uh, topic. Uh, setting it up and improving. Then so once you have found your niche, once you've found the industry that you want to target, you need to figure out a good assembly line. How are you gonna, you know, set it up and how are you gonna repeat and improve the same process, okay? And I have that picture because once Henry Ford improved the design, assembly line, you know, did pretty good. I think they have a pretty good business model. So I'll be talking about the setups, you know, throughout my presentation on like, you know, what, what tools I use, what plugins I use to you know have a good setup, but Rest assured, it's going to be focused on WordPress, right? So if you are if you're using, if you're creating a blog or any type of website, you can get on WordPress. Yes, it's really easy to use. So let's get into like what are the ways of 
you know, make money from your site. Advertisement, any type of advertisement you can think of. CPC, which is cost per click. ECPM, which is cost per mill. Cost per mill, think of it, for every thousand views, you get an X amount of dollars, right? For those who are not aware of it. Uh, link sales, paid reviews, you know, whatever. Whatever type of advertisement somebody wants on your site, that's one way of making a good chunk of money. If you are creating a site that's going to get a lot of a lot of people's eyes, you know, a lot of people, you're better off going with the ECPM model than any of the other ones. For example, this 25, right? We're getting millions of pages. For us to say, okay, we want a cost per click deal, which means for every click we send you, you know, you pay us X amount. It doesn't really make sense because I don't know how many clicks we're getting. Okay? If, if we're getting a lot of clicks, this is a very targeted site, I'm going to get more clicks. So if I'm selling an ad on WG Beginner, which might not have millions and millions of pages, but I'm going to send you thousands upon thousands of clicks, so I want to be paid that. But on a site like Crack or a College Humor or, you know, any, any, any of those like bigger sites that have a lot of people coming to it, just reading, they're less likely to click on that. So you, you're better off getting paid in a cost per mill model than anything else. Link sales, I would stay away from it in general. Because Google doesn't really like it. And you, 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 you're putting up your site's reputation off. What's but, an example of link sales? Mean? Um, so if somebody, if somebody comes to you and is like, hey, I want a link in your site or a link on your home page, but those are the most common you know, um, increase that we get. And they are only targeting you because they, they think that your site has a good search engine ranking and you know, they, they'll get a keyword. They're like, okay, I want a link to my insurance company. So cheap car insurance, that would be their link. No. Yeah, they probably make so it's you down. Yeah. So like on your site, I mean, you know, on the side, you know, well, somewhere start green, blue, host gator, yeah. all of that. Yeah. What is that list? What are those listed as? Uh, those are advertisements. Private ads. Private ads. Those are private ads, and those, those are usually banners. Okay. Uh, and I'll get into like how affiliate marketing is working and like how how we're doing all that in a second. But so if you if you're having banner ads, use them. But like if you buy a banner ad, you're gonna get a no follow link from us. Okay. No follow search engine doesn't really go on it. You know, so you're not really getting link to off. But the advertisement that we have is targeted to our audience. I'm not going to put a car insurance ad on, on WP Beginner because it's totally irrelevant. I'm not going to put a gambling thing on WP Beginner. It's totally irrelevant, right? So if somebody had a WordPress plugin out, I can give them a link. Even if it's two ball, it's not going to hurt me as much, right? So creative ways of selling a link on your site wouldn't be like, you know, I'm going to link to you from every single page of my site. That's stupid, right? But if it's just one plugin, why would I want a link from every single page of my site? I can create an article. Which can go either under paid reviews, but at WP Beginner we don't do reviews. We only do how-to articles, right? So we can say, all right, we'll do a how-to article, and we can give you a direct link in there. Or it could be, it could be like something totally generic, like you know, email marketing, and Aweber wants a link, or Mailchimp wants a link from there, and we can like, or in Google software, all I can be like, all right, you know, let's work out a deal. You have your advertisement in that article, which would be a link, and you can pay us per month. Okay, or a lot of times they don't want to pay for one. They're like, okay, we'll pay you 100 bucks for a lifetime. You're like, oh my god, I'll have 100 bucks this month or like a thousand bucks this month. Think about it, lifetime of the site. They're like, well, but that's just one post. If you if you're going by that model, and you're having 30 posts a day. Maybe it's worth it, but if you're having one article a day, you just started it out. I wouldn't really do that deal. Uh, Paid reviews, only review things that you really stand behind because it's all about the trust, right? If I review a crappy product, my people, like, all the audience are gonna be pissed off and be like, dude, you refer to old shit products to me, and now I'm not gonna buy anything. So, always think of your audience first. Like, I get so many, like, really, really good offers that I just turn down because I don't like that product. If I'm not going to use that product, you know, doesn't mean that, like, so here's, like, here's how I put it. I, I, I don't have to be using the product that I'm recommending, or it should be something good enough that I would use if I had a need for it. If it doesn't fall into those two categories, I'm not going to recommend it. So I recommend, you know, 
you doing something similar. This is the affiliate sales model. You don't have a product when you're saying, but let's say you write all about cameras, okay, all about photography. You have a really great site, you're teaching people how to take you know, good photos, or you know, you're sharing your photography, and you're like, this is my camera. You know, I, I use Canon 60D or whatever, I don't know. I'm not a very good photographer. But let's say you have, you know, whatever camera you're using, people often just link to the Amazon page or a Canon page. Why don't you just put your video link there? If you have your personal blog, right, and you read, you read this really amazing book, and you're like, I'm going to recommend this book, why not just put your affiliate link in there? Just about any online publisher or any online product store, they have an affiliate program. Amazon has one, eBay has one, and they're really, really big. But even the smaller ones have them. And if somebody doesn't, I, I write them an email like, hey, I really love your product. Do you have a affiliate program? Like, no, we don't have one listed on the site, but we do have a closed one. Yeah, you know, we, we don't mind inviting you. Or they're like, we don't have one, but we can work out a good deal between, you know, just us. Which might be, hey, you get, you know, free service for life. That's like, okay, instead of me paying you $90 a month, you uh, get free in and sale everything. Right? That's good. Or they can, you know, sometimes just set, set up one just for you. And I have had that numerous times where companies don't have an affiliate program, and I reach out to them, and then they end up going about setting one up and then they end up promoting them. Premium content. This is where a lot of people make a lot of money. <coughs> In short, you have a bunch of free resources, and now you came out with your own course. Let's say you talk all about guitar lessons. Okay, you talk all about how to, how to play guitar and stuff. You're like, I have a beginner's guide for you know, beginner's guitar lessons that you know you would actually go and give in person, but I put online behind a paid wall, and the person has to pay you thirty nine dollars or you know nineteen dollars a month, and you you talk and you share with them you know your tricks and tips. An example. That's just an example of paid content, and it works in just about every industry, and it doesn't always have to be a continuity program either. Sometimes, like a good friend of mine, Dan Rouse, he had a blog called Digital Photography. Okay, and every few months they come out with a new ebook, and all of his ebooks are just like really, really good and targeted for his audience. And he's built such a huge audience over like you know so many years, I think like five years, no, more than six years, I think. That any, the day he comes out with a sale, it's a six-figure product launch. The day he comes out with an ebook, within that 24 hours, he has made six figures. Just from that launch. Why? Because he's constantly give back to the audience, constantly adds value. So when he comes out with a product, he's going to like, dude, this guy gives me so much stuff for free, which is so good. Then imagine what his pay stuff is going to be like. Sounds like people that try to sell time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So he has he has their trust. He's provided so much value, so so much value that sometimes the audience might not need that product, they'll still buy it to support you. That's, that's, that's the funny concept, right? People are like, where's the donate button on your site? I don't, I don't really you know, go by the donation model because that's not what we do. But people ask me, hey, you know, we really love your site, how can I donate to you? How can I become a monthly donation, donate, donate subscriber? List 25 is, is like so funny. So I had some shirts you know, that I got printed out that I would wear, I, had, I gave out to some friends. People took pictures of them and it was online. Users email, hey, how can I get a list of 25 shirts? There was no store on the site. Like I'm like, oh, uh, you want one? He's like, yeah. Just, just mail me your address, man. I don't want, I don't want to charge you anything. <laughs> I got all the pay for shipping. But people want to buy those shirts just because they like the site so much. Same with the beginner. I just kept them creating a page for donation for people who want to ask for donation, and I gave multiple levels. One-time donation, um, like monthly donation, like annual donation, because people are like, dude, you're offering so much help for free, like I want to do that. So if you, if you come out with a product for twenty-nine dollars every like six months, granted it's adding value, and you have thousands of users who are willing to buy your product, it's twenty-nine grand for every product launch, right? Just this in time. So premium content works good. Doesn't even always have to be behind a paywall. You you can most definitely have that. You can have, you know, I'm going to come out with these tutorials, you know, every every week, or you know, these articles every week, and you should subscribe to my inner circle or internal community or 
you know, mastermind group or whatever, right? You can have those and have charge a monthly fee for it, or you could, you know, have a one-time premium product and still make a lot of money. And I'll talk to you about like how, how to set it up. It's really, really easy that you know, anybody can do it. I'll get into plugins a little bit. Services, right? That's how like um, I do all of my business. So people come to the site, we have service, we do consulting. And oftentimes we end up like turning the client down because this consulting they want is just not worth it, right? We already have articles on that and it's like you can do articles like, hey, here's all your questions and answers already. But if it's like a business client, like, yeah, sure, we'd love to do really. So if you if you're a, if you're like a social media person and you're blogging about social media, you can have your services listed, right? So how many of you know Ray Hoff, Ray Hoff and Sugar Ray? Anybody? Right? So what does she do? Services. She did her own consulting. Um, so you can have your services mentioned anywhere. Any type of service you can think of. Some people have service as a product, sort of. So I, I mean, I've seen a bunch of people not doing that. Like, okay, I I can like look at your sales funnel model. Or I can look at your website and see what's wrong with it. I can look at your social media strategy and see what's wrong with it with a one-time fee, $599. And I'll give, I'll give you a, a, long, like a very long report on every single thing that I see wrong with it. And that is something that like every any social media person can apply to, right? You don't always need a client on a monthly retainer. Imagine you get 10 people who are willing to buy a $599 product for this one one-time like consulting service. But since you put that price out there, people are like, okay, I want this or I don't want it. Maybe it's too expensive. Maybe you can have multiple pricing, right? So you should always try it. Sometimes people are like, oh, your one price is too expensive, and then you have two options, and you're like, well, uh, they're all too expensive. You can, you know, but try different pricing models. I've learned that if you have three pricing models, people really like that versus just one. Because when you have one, the question is, should I buy this or not? When you have multiple, they have a question. The question kind of changed. Which one should I buy? So <laughs> they're convinced in buying. Now they're just trying to justify which option they want to buy it at. Whereas if you're just one, the question is, should I buy it or should I not buy it? Right? So you can, you can try all, all sorts of things in your, in your services. It could be you know, just an hour of phone call with you uh, or whatnot. One of my favorite things is this guy. How many of you have read the oatmeal? Like, this guy is totally amazing. His audience is like so loyal. Would you really buy this book? How to, <laughs> seriously, how to tell if your cat is calling to kill you? <laughs> and I think this, this book they ended up making the bestseller. He, he decided to like do a campaign for a Tesla museum and raise over and raise over a million dollars. He raised over a million dollars. The Tesla Foundation needed eight hundred fifty thousand. He was like, "Yep, sure, I can do it." Yeah. Boom, a million dollars. That's how loyal his audience is. If you could be standing behind a cause, they're like, "We want to support you." He was getting sued by this like really retarded company, and he was like, "You know what? I'm not gonna pay you anything. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna donate this money." To World Wildlife Foundation and like I think some Kansas side, yeah. and he wanted he got like three hundred thousand dollars donation, and he like did he a lot. He took of pictures stuff. of him with all the stacks of ash, like all around <laughs> in shapes, like the middle finger. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> all, and all, like, all that just stuff. like everything that he could, and like drew pictures of the guy's wife, and like put all this stuff up. Yeah, and donated all of it to <laughs> charity. He's like, you know what? First you rip off my stuff, and then when I call you out, you want to sue me for that? He's like, what? Wow. Like, you want, you want this much money in damages? I'm going to take all that money, donate it here, and you're not going to get anything. That is right? right? So, yes, it is, you know, that, that, this is just part of the book, but you can, you know, sell fan gears. You can, you can sell anything that, that, that's related to your brand, whether it's, you know, shirts, stickers, like, a little badge on your site. So when they, when they comment, a little badge shows up saying, these are pro members. <laughs> There's no, like, you know, I, I talked about, like, the status model. You can, you can do any of that, and people who are, like, the most loyal to you, they'll, they'll buy your stuff just to give back, like, you know, I got this thing. Do you consult to Donald Trump? Because I, I'm seeing some. Do I do what? Do you